Okay, greetings people of the world, Matthew back with you here at Novora Autism for the continuation of Let's Play Eternal Sonata. So, last time we had our two boys in our other storyline, Allegretto and Beat, defeat their first boss successfully, and our young heron Polka was accompanied by a man who says that this world that he's in is all in his dream. And he has the only name in the game that is not some sort of musical reference. Frederick. And so, we'll get to learn more about Frederick as we go along in this game. So, the reason why we are doing this particular episode is because Polka wants to show Frederick something, because it can only be seen at night. So, let's make our way there now by going this direction. And if you've ever seen the movie Avatar, well, let me tell you, you are in for a treat for this episode. We're going this way. Yeah, if you've ever seen Avatar, this game predates Avatar by two years. And you remember how old the flora and fauna would glow at night? Well, check this stuff out. Yeah, we've got glowing plants here in the Heaven's Mirror Forest. It's perhaps the only place in the game that's not named after a musical reference. As I said, almost everything and everyone in this game is named for some sort of a musical reference. I mean, look at this. Look how these lights are floating up into the sky the way they are. Just that the rhythm and the pace that they're going, slow enough that you can really gaze and s enjoy the splendor of them. It's absolutely amazing. What all the amazing artwork that they did and all the visuals and the graphics they did in this game is just incredible. And that's why I love this game so much. So let's take on our new opponents here in the dark. So we do get some lights, but not for not a lot of real estate to use it. So as you may have noticed, we are fighting a Lopra Knight. That's a bird that carries a lance around. Yeah, and something else that you'll also notice a lot in this game is that um, the characters, their clothes, you probably have noticed a lot already over the course of this game, but a lot of the characters were very elaborate and beautiful outfits, and it's another really incredible reason why I like this game so much. And you may have noticed that the Lopper Knight on his last attack was able to attack both of us at the same time because we were so close to each other. Because, yeah, I pointed this out in a previous episode that you can, if enemies are close enough to each other, you can attack multiple enemies at once. But conversely, that can also happen against you as well. But we have gotten Polka her first experience level gained. And so we will now move on. Lots of different split paths for you to take. Here we get a poison white cap which poisons the enemy, but it's not something I use. Yeah, a lot of status inflicting items I do not really take the point to use. Yeah, here's a really unique situation. If you're standing close enough to an enemy, but you're in the right spot, you can actually use a different ability than you would have if you're standing point blank. So yeah, once again demonstrated here. And we're able to kill it off. And these two will be able to gain experience levels very quickly now. So up we go. Yeah, the Heaven's Mirror Forest is rather long. But hey, on the right side, it does give us a chance at a lot of experience points. Alright, so Frederick gained his first experience level on that last exchange. Yeah, in this place you can gain experience levels really quickly around here. And Polka gains a level in that last battle. And we also get a chance to open this treasure chest with an Angel Trumpet. Alright. Was there anything further over here? No. It's just misleading. <laughs> yeah, that'll happen sometimes. You can get led off the wrong path. Like here, for instance. Yeah, lots of places where you can get misled. Okay, so we want to go this direction. No, no, wait. Yeah, we want to go over here first, up to the pond, because there's a treasure chest over here. Yeah, sometimes, and we got a peach cookie, by the way, sometimes the camera will pan in such a way that it will allow you to see things that you may have missed. Like, for instance, the treasure chests. So, yeah, the game does help you to get the treasure chest wherever possible, 
which, let's face it, it's quite a benefit. It is quite a very useful benefit. I and I think if these two get close enough, we can possibly get a double play. Let's see where we go with this. Right. Oh, nice. Not bad at all. So yeah, if it comes close enough, we might be able to get the double play here. Or maybe not. No, we did simply did too much damage against the one Lopper Knight to make it mean something. And go! Go, man, go. Help that silly, ugly bird with the horns. Yeah, what's a bird, what's a bird doing with horns on its head? Yeah, lots of crazy elaborate designs on monsters in this game. And both Polka and Frederick gained experience levels. So Polka goes up to four. And Frederick goes up to three. There we go. Yes, yeah, skating levels is good. Okay. I want to go straight up here or to the left. Okay, did I make the right choice? Um, no. No, I want to go to the right. <laughs> yeah, I've played this game every year. This was this was actually the first RPG I ever got for the PS3. But even, but that was six years ago, and even then I still can't remember where everything is. Alright, so we want to go over here. Yes, here's the treasure chest containing... A walking parasol, which is an improved weapon for Miss Polka. So let's go ahead and give it to her. So this will increase her attack from 24 to 26. So, yeah, it's just two points, but of course, we're still early on in this game. We're still very much early on in this LP. So now we can go this direction. And we should be getting close to halfway. Yeah, it says Middle North. And so Frederick gained, got to level 4 in the previous battle. Um, I think I want to go straight ahead here. And yes, I do. There's a treasure chest over here. Okay, so where's our little trinket? Oh, did I get misled again? Oh no, there you are. I was wondering where you were. I knew you were around here somewhere. So we got a copper necklace, and that's, an, that's a little accessory there. And that is for increasing defense. Um, Polka does need it because her defense is lower right now. And so away we shall go again. Back this direction, and then now we can go to the left. And so Polka got to experience level 5 in that last battle, and there's our little save point. Um, but I'm not ready to save yet. I want to come over here first. Alright, so... Is there anything over here? Nope, just simply some experience. Heck, I'm fine with that. Any experience is good experience, the way I see it. So, we are about to go take on the boss of this particular area. Yeah, notice the safe spot, which means that we have a boss duel that is upcoming. So, we're gonna have to go and deal with that. Before we do though, however, I want to take the time first to get myself set up properly. Um, as far as HP is concerned, we're fine on that regard, but what we want to do is item set. You may have noticed this before, but now I'm going to take the opportunity to, to discuss it properly. You can put items in your item sets up to a maximum of 10 positions. And whatever item you use, the, you see the number in yellow, on the list. That's the number of places in your item set that I can take. Peach cookies and other cookies will take up one spot on your item set, but floral powders can take up two. Who? Um, they become more. The floral powders become more valuable later as your HP gets higher. But for the most part, we want to use the peach cookies. So we're going to use triangle to move these three remaining floral powders, and we're going to fill up the entire item set with ten peach cookies. Yeah, I'm good enough at this game that I don't need to use an angel trumpet, and let's hope it doesn't come to that anyway. So let's go ahead and go over here. Because we have a boss duel to contend with. In this little clearing. Yeah, how can a place so beautiful be home to a boss that's so ferocious? 
And we got a wild boar to deal with here. And it's ready to charge at a moment's notice. And here it comes! Alright, next boss duel. I know we can do it. And we're off and running. So make sure that you can get to its side and then start beating it up with your abilities. Make sure you get to either side of it. And be careful because you can get caught off guard by its attacks. Yeah, it used the special ability there and it's definitely used um, its abilities to its advantage and took advantage of my nervousness there. So let's slow it down a bit. Yeah, sometimes an ability can knock an opponent down, which will help you because it takes away some of their clock. But this is disadvantageous to us because we're both positioned in the dark now, which means we can't use our healing abilities. We do have the peach cookies, but we need to, of course, try and make an emphasis on... Oops. Crap. Make an emphasis on using the healing abilities so that we don't have to rely on peach cookies so much. Ah. Yeah, I prefer it use its regular abilities more than anything else. So we'll beat him up there. And then we'll use a couple of peach cookies. And then I'm intentionally going to draw the boar away. There we go, let's see if it works. Nope, it did not. Alright, go. Pound away on that boar with your baton. And boom. Leave this place. Alright, I'm gonna to continue to attack from far with Shade Comet. And there's enough time to use it again. And again! Awesome. Yeah, now it comes towards Polka. Now it can hit from behind. Yeah, this is optimistically what you want to see happen. Get behind an enemy and wail away on it. It looks like it's starting to get weak in here. Let's keep pounding away on this sucker. Yeah, it's definitely staggered, which means we're close to defeating it. Oops. False start. Uh, yeah, that's something that my nervousness just gets the best of me, and I screw up on a false start. Alright, Shea Comet, go. And again. And there it is, there's the victory. And we get a Bamboo Shaft, which is an enhanced weapon for Frederick. Plus, he also gained a level, so he is now up to 5. Our journey continues. So, well done. So, now that we've basically completed the tutorial battling in this game, we now move into a new party level. And as I mentioned before, we're going as the game goes on, we're going to start seeing handicaps placed on us in the course of battle, which means... The cool thing that we just saw Polka doing the Shade Comets, being able to use that and then have the clock stop, well, that's no longer possible. When we make our first move, then we are committed to seeing our action through to the very end. However, we can still, before that, figure out what we're going to do next before we make that first move. So, really no harm, no foul. And so now... I guess it's kind of dangerous out here when it's late at night. The animals in the forest never used to be this aggressive before. Well, at least we fought, fended them off. You never told me if I'd answered your question correctly. No, she didn't. What? About reading her mind. This is all just a story in my mind. So I'm sure there's no way I could possibly be wrong. We'll, s we'll see if you're true eventually. Come on, it's almost time. We have to hurry if we're gonna make it, Frederick. Yeah, this is a time-sensitive situation. Wait. Yeah, you gotta hurry there, Frederick. Polka's gonna leave you behind. These flower 
flowers are what I wanted to show you. Yeah, she's come to show him a meadow of flowers. But it's not the same meadow of flowers that we saw Just earlier. Watch. They're about to blossom. And now you heard right. Flowers that blossom at night. So yeah, check this awesomeness out. There they go. They blossom and they light up the night. How's that for cool? It's just as I said, so much of a part of how I might love this game so much. There is so many good things that are associated with it. They really went above and beyond with the graphics, and for an early PlayStation 3 game, this is really amazing. Even you have to admit, if you're watching this, that this is very impressive. So as we pan back to Polka and Frederick... What... what are they? They're called Heaven's Mirror. They're like a reflection of the starry sky on the meadows. This is the only place they bloom in the forest. Yeah, that's true. These flowers never bloom during the day, only at night. Only something you can find in Fancy World, right? When the sun is up, they stay in their buds, but they're able to absorb sunlight with their leaves. And after night falls, they let out all the light they've stored when they blossom. It always happens at exactly 2 o'clock in the morning. 2 o'clock in the morning? Why are you up so late, young lady? It's past your bedtime. Absolutely stunning. It truly is a wondrous sight. They are, aren't they? However... But they're also called death lights. Death lights? The sun brings life, but the dark brings death. And these flowers bloom in darkness. So, darkness is evil, light is good. That is the perception. Whether you want to call them Heaven's Mirror or Death Lights, that's up to you, Frederick. Yeah, situation of call it what you want. But it seems like, these days, nearly everyone is taken to calling them Death Lights. Just like it seems like nearly everyone won't buy floral power ago, from Polka. It was thought they looked like the light that guided people to death, since they blossom the opposite of regular flowers. Even now, a lot of people don't like these flowers. To many, they're still considered a bad omen. So then why are we here? That's also how they think of me. If they're a bad omen, why are we here? Yeah, it seems like a sad place to come. Frederick, you said before that this whole world is all just a dream you're having, right? That is what he said. But if you're in your own dream, how can you be so completely positive that what's happening is only a dream? And if what you're experiencing in the dream is so realistic to you, how can you even tell what's actually the real world? That's very philosophical from I you. to prove my point. You didn't read my mind earlier. Don't believe her. She's just a child. She's bluffing. <laughs> you were wrong. I was thinking about leaving Tenuto. I want to go out into the world and live my own life. Even if that life only exists inside your dream. Yeah, she's not waiting for a bat mitzvah or a rumspringer or, or anything like that. I don't know how much time I have left to live, but I want to live what's left of my life in a positive way, bringing happiness to others. And that's what I want to try and do with my Let's Plays. I just want to help people somehow. As do I. Like these flowers, even though people call them death lights, they still blossom and struggle to live on. Mm-hmm. And yet they've maintained their glow. You're going to leave the village? But where do you intend to go after you leave Tenuto? Yeah, because she's definitely not welcome in Ritardando. I'll go to Forte Castle. And then I'm going to meet with the Count. To ask about the taxes on floral powder. Because right now, they're hurting everyone in the village. Yes, but why would you want to go? You Shouldn't know, someone else should go, like an adult? You couldn't read my mind. Since you can't use magic, it means you don't have an incurable illness. So, then wasn't it established that he did have magic? At my house tonight. 
I'll tell my mom you're coming. She's gonna be long asleep by now if it's two o'clock in the morning. You're a guest in our dream world, after all. That's not something that happens every day. <laughs> no, it definitely is not. But this is something we will definitely see a lot over the course of this Let's Play. It resembles you. A bad omen. Death lines. Hmm. And so we bid these flowers adieu.